Hello and welcome to National Park Wild. I'm Eric, here to discuss the hydrothermal explosion that occurred at Biscuit Basin in Yellowstone National Park on July 23rd. The video of the explosion is startling, and when many saw it, they assumed it was a volcanic eruption, and some even thought it might be a precursor to a supervolcano eruption, or as many call it, the big one. I was also curious about what caused this and how it may relate to Yellowstone's future. Therefore, I have done some research on hydrothermal explosions and the Yellowstone caldera to clear the air on this subject, mostly for myself, but I thought some of you might also enjoy learning about it. Before getting into any science, I'm just going to go over the National Park Service's July 24th report on the explosion to get everyone up to speed. According to the NPS, the explosion sent steam and rock hundreds of feet into the air. I don't know of an official measurement or an exact number, but it seems the height of the debris reach was similar to the height water reaches when Old Faithful erupts. It may have been higher, but I cannot officially confirm this. In terms of damage, a portion of the boardwalk built over the basin collapsed to an extent, and it will remain closed for the rest of 2024. You've probably already heard that while there were many people on the boardwalk during this event, no injuries were reported. The NPS reported that some of the debris landed hundreds of feet away from the site, and the damage to the boardwalk was pretty notable, so the fact that nobody was hurt surprised me at first. The question of how everybody made it out safely is the first I wanted to know the answer to. Looking at the original video of the explosion and comparing it to Google Maps, it is clear that most people ran away from the parking lot's direction, evidenced by the fact that the explosion is seen on the left side of the path from the video where the camera is facing, which is the opposite direction of the person who filmed the video, Vlada March, was running with others along the boardwalk at the time. Viewing the video taken by March, it seems based on the footage that she ran about 150 feet from where the video starts to where it ends. She was already a little over 200 feet away from the source of the explosion based on my Google Maps measurements. I'm assuming that she and others continued to move away from the explosion after the video cuts off, but it seems nearly every bystander was far enough away when the explosion started that they were out of range of the first rocks that made impact with the ground. Those that weren't may have just gotten lucky. It seems that the lack of injury during the explosion was a mix of a quick response from people running further away from the site, the fact that none of the rocks launched particularly far, and a little bit of chance that none of the rocks hit the people who started closest to the explosion. After this, I was curious as to how people who ran further up the boardwalk like Vlada March made it back to the parking lot. The boardwalk was damaged, so my initial guess was that the people waited until a ranger arrived who guided them further up the boardwalk to the Upper Geyser Basin Biscuit Basin Trail. This trail connects the boardwalk to the Geyser Basin containing Old Faithful, and the trail crosses the main park road to reach it. Based on this, I thought a ranger may have guided the others to this part of the road and either back to the parking lot along the road or to emergency vehicles, the latter seeming likely given that this explosion was large enough that people may have expected there to be major injuries. I ended up finding an interview with March on KBZK the primary news station of Bozeman, Montana. The reporter was Cassidy Powers of MTN News, and in a report covering the interview, she said March and her family were on a tour while at Yellowstone, and their tour guide led them along the damaged boardwalk after the steam had cleared. I also found March's YouTube channel, which has seven total subscribers, so it's not very well known. On it, she posted a short of herself and others walking toward the damaged boardwalk. In the video, you can hear somebody yelling, and I quote, I don't know if it's safe to walk through here, I am not a ranger. I assume that this was a tour guide, and while I can't confirm the context of this, this clause seems to suggest that the party was moving back toward the parking lot very soon after the actual explosion, before any rangers had arrived. Therefore, my initial hypothesis was likely incorrect. My guess that people headed further up the boardwalk was absolutely wrong, and my guess that people waited for a ranger to arrive was probably the same. I assumed that if a ranger had arrived, they would have taken the Upper Geyser Basin path I mentioned because it was still intact and only a brief walk from the place where people were stranded. Ultimately, the most important thing here is that while the boardwalk was damaged, the wooden platforms must have been mostly intact and sturdy given that everybody, including March's 6- and 8-year-old sons, made it across fine. So to conclude, several people, including the woman who filmed the viral video of the explosion, were far enough up the boardwalk that they were past the site of the main explosion. They ran further up the boardwalk to avoid falling debris, and nobody was hit by anything or too close to the steam, mostly due to just starting out of range for most of the rock's impact. 
the dust most likely settled soon after, maybe after only a couple minutes, similar to when I witnessed a landslide at Yosemite National Park. And I presume the people on the boardwalk were anxious to leave the site. With no park ranger around at the time, a tour guide amongst the people led the way back over the boardwalk, probably not knowing about the road access further up the path. Since the people were careful and the boardwalk was still pretty sturdy, everybody made it back unharmed. What happened after they all made it to the parking lot, I don't know. But that is how I believe the people on the boardwalk survived the explosion and returned to their cars without sustaining any injury. The next question is what caused the explosion in the first place. Let's begin by explaining how a hydrothermal explosion generally occurs. To summarize, the United States Geological Survey, or USGS, defines a hydrothermal explosion as the result of extremely hot water rapidly converting to steam and ejecting from beneath the Earth's surface. But how does boiling water cause an explosion? To find out, let's get a little sciency. Under the surface of Yellowstone's basins, there are shallow reservoirs of hot water that can flow through the cracks between reservoirs. This water has a tendency to become superheated. Superheating is the event in which water reaches or surpasses the boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but it does not boil in superheating, meaning the water does not convert to vapor. This is a result of surface tension, which is the tendency of a liquid surface to take up as little area as possible. The surface tension of the water counteracts the expanding vapor pressure and inhibits the bubbles within the water from expanding. This can be summarized by the relationship stating that excess vapor pressure within the bubble from the surface tension is inversely proportional to the diameter of the bubble. Therefore, the bubbles do not expand and pop in the typical steady manner of boiling water, and an outside interference is required to cause the conversion from liquid to vapor. So that is the state of the water underneath the pool where the explosion occurred. Now let's explain how the water actually explodes. According to the USGS, the reservoir can become partially sealed off and cause ambient pressure to drop. And this is the interference that will allow the water to become vapor. This next part may seem self-explanatory for anyone who's watched Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or anything involving built-up pressure, but I do want to explain the whole process. Steam, like any other compound in the gaseous state, takes up more space than its liquid form. The steam starts moving through the cracks within Yellowstone's natural plumbing system, but it doesn't always have a place to go. When the water and steam are trapped underground with no more paths to the Earth's surface, a new path can be formed. And that is what caused the hydrothermal explosion at Biscuit Basin. The vapor pressure built up and the steam expanded until there was no more room and it burst through the ground. The explosion left behind a bit of a crater where the water had once been stored, altering the shape of Black Diamond Pool in Biscuit Basin. This is similar to an event in 1989, when Pork Shop Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin erupted and exploded. This was due to water within the geyser increasing heat, eventually reaching a point where the silica surrounding the geyser's cavity could no longer withstand the pressure, and this rock was launched into the air. Ultimately, hydrothermal explosions are the result of superheated water within underground reservoirs being rapidly converted to steam. The steam expands to a point where the reservoir can't contain it, so it blasts through the ground, reaching the Earth's surface. Now let's discuss how this relatively small event may relate to the Yellowstone supervolcano as a whole. The NPS has stated that the explosion in Biscuit Basin was not caused by volcanic activity. Their report confirms that it was caused by activity within the hydrothermal system just beneath Yellowstone's surface. I've seen social media comments about the explosion arguing it was the result of volcanic activity. And there is some truth to what they're saying. The anatomy of Yellowstone as seen in this image shows a separation between the superheated reservoirs and the magma system. The volcanic activity beneath Yellowstone is indeed responsible for the superheating of water. It's why the hot springs of Yellowstone exist at all. It's why they are what they are. However, the shallower of the two magma bodies, that being the one closer to the surface, reaches from 5 to 17 kilometers, or 3 to 10 miles. So it is, at its closest point, 3 miles away, from the surface where the explosion occurred. No magma reached the surface. In fact, the magma system is not altered at all according to official reports. The magma is still three miles underneath the site of the explosion. It is fair to say that one of the factors that caused it was the superheating that resulted from the magma, but this is nothing new. The drop in pressure was caused by a change that occurred within the underground reservoirs near the surface, most likely something plugging the pathways of the system. And that is what caused the actual explosion to occur. In conclusion, since no volcanic activity takes place within 3 miles depth-wise of the explosion site, 
volcanic activity could not influence the pressure of the hydrothermal system and therefore was not the cause of the Biscuit Basin explosion. While the explosion would not have been possible without the existence of magma below the surface, the immediate factors that caused the drop in pressure and the subsequent events are independent from the magmatic systems. Simply put, the Biscuit Basin explosion is not a precursor to, or an indicator of, the big one. This event was startling, but it should not be used to stir up fear over Yellowstone's future, or the country's future as a whole. For now, the park and country are still here, and so are all of us, so I say we continue to enjoy marveling at and learning from Yellowstone National Park. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. I mainly did it to teach myself about this, but I hope you learned something as well. Subscribe for more National Park content. I'll see you next time.